Hi everyone, Dr. Alwes here. In this short video, I'm going to introduce you to cells and the cell theory and do a brief discussion of some of the things that we find in the body but outside of our cells. When we talk about cells, cells are the smallest unit of life. And if I were to take that out of technical science terms, all that means is that anything that is alive has to be a cell. In human cells, we see a lot of these structures like this. If you've taken microbiology, you know that some cells aren't nearly this complicated, but every living thing is a cell, or it's more than one cell. When we talk about a cell, there are three parts that define it. The first part of the cell that we'll do a whole video about by itself is the plasma membrane. And when you think about the plasma membrane, consider this the dividing line, or kind of like the wall between the inside and the outside of the cell. This is what allows us to have different things on the inside and the outside because of this membrane barrier. But then we have to look at the stuff that's on the inside. So the stuff on the inside is called the cytosol, which is the soupy stuff, and the organelles, which are kind of the functional machines that are inside a cell. So these are components inside the plasma membrane. We also have inside a cell, this large central area called the nucleus. The nucleus surrounded in its own nuclear membrane is where we keep our DNA. So our directions for life are very well protected in the middle of the nucleus of the cell. When we talk about cells in general, the body has something like 37 quadrillion cells. So if we were to put uh, 12 zeros behind this number, that's how many cells you have in your body. Many, many cells. And as you can see from our pictures here, there are different types of cells as well. So of those 37 quadrillion, there's about 250 different types of cells. And when I say that they're different types, I mean that they have a different shape. And remember, their shape being their anatomy. If the anatomy is different, this, the physiology is different as well. So different shapes, different sizes, and very importantly, different functions. So we can see down here a sperm cell with its long skinny tail compared to this large egg that we can see right here. No tail on that one and much bigger. We can see in our picture neurons, uh, as well as their helper cells. We can see over here the three kinds of, of cells that we find in blood. Or here's some of the cells that we find in your trachea to help you with, uh, with catching dust and debris that tries to go into your lungs. The big idea, we've got lots of different types of cells and our whole body is made out of cells. That brings us to this idea of something called the cell theory. So the cell theory is some of the most basic ideas that relate to biology. The first tenet of the cell theory is something we've already talked about. Cells are the smallest thing that's alive. Everything you study from a human to a fish to a bacteria, everything is made of cells. When we think of the cells in your body, your cells can only arise from other ones. So humans start as a single cell, that's a, when an egg and a sperm fuse to make this, this fertilized egg. That fertilized egg divides and divides and divides and we end up with all the cells in your body. As you continue to grow and repair, you're using other cells that you have to enable you to build new ones. When we talk about the functions of your cells, those functions are, are dictated both by the shape of your cells by themselves, but also what they have inside. So the organelles of a cell will give us a really good idea of what jobs it can and cannot do. And we'll talk about toward the end of this chapter how different kinds of cells have different amounts of, of organelles. Some cells have a lot of mitochondria. That gives them a lot of energy. Some cells have a lot of ribosomes that lets them make a lot of proteins. Different amounts of organelles means we can do different big picture jobs. And finally, cell theory states that we need our cells to be working correctly for us as an organism to be able to function. If my skin cells aren't doing their job, I'm not protected from my environment. 
If my digestive tract cells aren't doing their job, I'm not getting the nutrients I need. I need my cells to function correctly for me to be able to function as an organism. Now, as much as we've talked about the cells, I wanna briefly take a jaunt to what's outside of them to allow us to focus in future videos on what I find on the inside. When we're talking about things that are outside of the plasma membrane, we call those extracellular. Extracellular means on the outside of our cells. The kinds of things that we find on the outside of the cell, the first one being fluids. There are many different kinds of fluids. We'll look at that in a picture. Uh, but one common type of fluid throughout your body is called interstitial fluid in between the cells and tissues. We also have plasma, which is found inside blood vessels. There's things like cerebrospinal fluid or lymph. So big picture, lots of fluids on the outside of the body. These fluids help us to dissolve things like nutrients or transport things. There's also extracellular fluids that we're secreting. So when we looked at those respiratory tract cells on the previous slide, they're gonna make mucus. When we talk about stomach cells, they make juices. All of these secretions that we make either help to lubricate something in the body or they aid with digestion. The final thing that we find outside of cells is actually not a fluid at all. Uh, it's called extracellular matrix. This matrix word means proteins and sugars. So outside of many of the cells in your body, I have specific kinds of proteins or specific kinds of sugars to help hold the cells together. So extracellular matrix along with body fluids and our secretions, all of these things on the outside of a cell's plasma membrane. When we look in the body, there are several different types of fluids that exist. I wanna hone in on three of them that we can see in our picture here. So the first one that we see labeled here is intracellular fluid. Intracellular means inside a cell. Intracellular fluid is the fluid that we find inside here. My other name for intracellular fluid is what we saw on our second slide. It's called cytosol. Cytosol, the intracellular fluid. It's the only fluid inside cells in our body. The second kind of fluid that we see labeled in our picture is an example of an extracellular fluid. This extracellular fluid is called plasma. Plasma is my extracellular fluid that's on the outside of red blood cells, but on the inside of blood vessels. So plasma, an example of an extracellular fluid. The final kind of fluid that we see in this picture here is interstitial fluid. And interstitial fluid is another fluid that is outside of cells, but I find it inside tissues, in between cells, if you will. So while we're gonna spend most of our time in chapter three talking about things like cytosol or the organelles inside of it, be familiar with a couple of these other extracellular fluids as well, like plasma that we find in blood vessels or interstitial fluid that surrounds all of the cells that are found in tissues in your body.